Hatham Kenway has been considered a fan favourite amongst the Assassin's Creed community for a long time, and is often the subject of many conversations regarding Assassin's Creed. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You're probably thinking of a specific book titled Assassin's Creed Forsaken, which chronicles the life of Hatham himself. I mean, yes, technically that is Hatham's sequel, and a prequel to AC3 as well, technically. Anyway, I aim to explain why he needs an in-game sequel slash prequel to AC3. And before we do that, if you're new here and enjoy my content, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know when I upload, which is every Wednesday and Sunday at 12am Australia time, by the way. Sharing this channel with your family and friends would also mean a lot, thanks. Please sit back and relax, because without further ado, we're jumping straight into the video. Just in case you don't know too much about Haytham, I will cover a quick biography of the man himself. To preface, Haytham Kenway is the son of pirate-turned-master assassin Edward Kenway, also the protagonist of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Haytham also happens to be the father of Connor Kenway, Assassin's Creed 3's protagonist. Despite having quite the connection to the assassins, Haytham himself doesn't actually qualify, or rather identify, as an assassin. Instead, he falls in with the Templars, and even goes as far as becoming the Grand Master for the Colonial Templars. I know, I know, it's confusing, but the explanation is worthwhile. So, Haytham was born on December 4th, 1725, in London. Haytham was born into a wealthy family, with his parents being Edward and Tessa Kenway, and his sister being Jennifer Scott. During Haytham's first years, he was what some old scholars would consider a recluse, and was what I would consider to be very oblivious, generally speaking. Growing up, he did receive the general assassin's training, and on his eighth birthday, received a steel sword from Edward. The next two years would be continuous training, right up until Edward's death on December 3rd, 1735. Reginald Birch, an acquaintance turned friend turned enemy of Edward, would take in Haytham after his family's tragedy. Reginald was a Templar, however, Haytham was not aware of the ongoing conflict between the Assassins and Templars at the time, so all he could really do was go along with Reginald's narrative. Reginald was planning to scour Europe in the hopes of finding Haytham's sister, Jennifer, and invited Haytham to join him. Haytham would be informed by one of his many family maids that Jennifer screamed of a traitor as she was dragged away by the intruders. The maid, or Emily, suggested that Reginald Birch could be the so-called traitor, but Haytham dismissed her, instead remaining sceptical of Edward's personal valet, Jack Digweed. Reginald Birch would introduce Haytham to Edward Braddock, a man serving as a Templar and soldier simultaneously. Braddock was instructed with conducting the search for Jennifer, and Haytham took the time to voice his suspicions surrounding Jack Digweed. As it turns out, Digweed had indeed also gone missing and the older men vowed to find him. From here, Haytham and Birch spent the next five years searching for Jennifer, who had been sold to Turkish slavers. The War of the Austrian Succession breaking out in 1740 forced Haytham and Birch to take a detour, and Birch decided to buy a property near Troyes, France, and all the while, Birch continued to teach Haytham the way of the Templars. Haytham found the Templar philosophy comforting, and considered the said philosophy to be a good match to his late father's questioning, which of course makes sense. However, Haytham and Birch had differing views on the first civilization. In 1744, Haytham would finally be inducted into the Templar Order, and assassinated his first target, a greedy merchant, in Liverpool. Then he went on to kill an Austrian prince. Haytham was soon recognised as a skilled killer. In 1747, Haytham killed Juan Vedemir, a Templar traitor, and recovered a journal containing details on the First Civilization, something Birch had requested. Haytham would meet Birch in Prague, and after supplying the journal, Haytham was informed that his mother had died. At some point, likely in 1747, Haytham returned to London and reread his old journal. Haytham realised that an old family maid, Betty, was in a relationship with Jack Dickweed, and after tracking her down, Haytham interrogated Betty, eventually discovering that a man with a West Country accent used Digweed's kids to threaten him, and supposedly blackmail was involved. Betty claimed that she had no knowledge of Digweed's whereabouts, but Haytham found a letter addressed to his former mate, detailing Digweed's current location, which was in southwest Germany. Two weeks after this initial interrogation, Haytham and Birch arrived in Germany, 
and interrogated a shopkeeper. In order to get the man talking, as he seemed suspicious, Haytham threatened the shopkeeper's son, which got him talking. The shopkeeper recounted that after being blackmailed by two British soldiers, he informed the soldiers of Digweed's location. With this information in hand, Haytham and Birch made their way to a nearby cabin. During the ride, Haytham spotted one of the soldiers and noticed the soldier had pointed ears. This detail was significant to Haytham, as one of the men who kidnapped Jennifer also had pointed ears. The two men continued towards the cabin, and eventually found the remaining soldier torturing Digweed. The man would make a run for it, and Haytham chased him into the forest, where the soldier would be stabbed in the kidney. The soldier possessed a West Country accent, and he revealed to Haytham that his father was an assassin, and died over a certain possession of his which of course was the journal containing EC information. Before any more could be revealed, the soldier died. Haytham would find papers detailing information regarding the dead soldier. He had served under Braddock's regiment in the Dutch Republic, and Haytham informed Birch of this revelation. It was during this meeting that Haytham was informed that Digweed had died. From here, Haytham began his hunt for the pointy-eared soldier. After a full day of riding, Haytham found the kidnapper, and after a short fight, a group consisting of British soldiers arrived and knocked out the two men. When Haytham woke up, he felt a rope around his neck, and discovered that he was thought to be the soldier he had recently killed, the pointy-eared man's acquaintance. Haytham would break free, but he couldn't prevent the man's execution. Braddock revealed that the executed soldier's name was Tom Smith, and Braddock didn't seem to care that one of Jennifer's kidnappers was under his command. Despite Braddock's obvious indifference, he allowed Haytham to conduct his investigation among Braddock's regiment, but was in turn requested to serve in the war against the French. Haytham was present as a member of Braddock's Coldstream Guards during the retreat from the siege of bergen op Zoom, and whilst boarding a ship, a family asked Haytham if they could come on board, to which Haytham allowed, as there was room. However, Braddock would have none of it, and ordered his executioner, Slater, to kill the family, including the children. This wouldn't be the only act of violence Haytham witnessed during his time with Braddock, and soon Haytham realised Braddock was abandoning the Templars, and opted to befriend Jim Holden, an older man who gave freely provided information regarding Tom Smith. Supposedly, Smith was a member of Braddock's inner circle of mercenaries, which worried Haytham greatly. When Haytham's service was up, he took on Jim Holden as his gentleman's gentleman, and Jim Holden would more often than not act as Haytham's carriage driver. Of course, this would be the same carriage driver we see after the assassination of Miko during AC3's prologue. In 1753, Haytham was asked to kidnap a young rebel by the name of Lucio Albertine, who was currently residing in Corsica and was being protected by Miko, an assassin. Miko ambushed Haytham, and during the attack, Haytham lost the sword Edward had gifted him 20 years prior. However, Haytham took control of the attack when Haytham pulled Miko into a crevasse, but in the process, he too was dragged into the crevasse. Miko managed to grab a hold of Haytham's arm and a rope to prevent himself from falling into a steep drop. Haytham took the opportunity to loosen Miko's hidden blade from his arm, taking the blade for himself. He also bit Miko's arm in the hopes that he would fall. Miko did indeed fall, but survived nonetheless. Haytham would find and bring Lucio to Birch, and Birch would use the boy to blackmail Lucio's mother, Monica, into decoding the journal Haytham had recovered from Juan Vedemir. So, this is everything Haytham does before AC3, but there is still a large gap in between what Haytham was doing when we finished playing it as him in AC3, saw what he was doing in AC Rogue, and when he returned during Connor's adolescence. Essentially, Haytham returned to Birch and handed over the journal. The friendship between Haytham and Birch was fading, as they hadn't seen each other for about two years. Haytham would lie to Birch, claiming that the colonial Templars were working on finding the Precursor site, and were given some clues as to another site in the Middle East. Haytham lied because during his time with Connor's mother, Geo, Charles Lee delivered a letter written by Jim Holden to Haytham. The letter contained Jennifer's whereabouts and that Braddock had died from his wounds. With Jennifer's information in hand, Haytham and Holden would begin tracking down Jennifer, and after two years, the two men found their way to Tokkapi Palace in Constantinople. Jennifer had served as a concubine, and after her service, she was taken to Kwasar al-Azum, 
the governor's palace in Damascus, where she was an attendant in the harem. Haytham and Holden acted as eunuchs to gain entry into the palace, and Haytham would approach Jennifer. However, the guards were alerted in the process. Holden stayed behind to fight the guards, which gave the Kenway siblings time to escape the palace. Holden would be taken to a monastery in Egypt, and a group of priests performed a surgery of sorts on Holden, making him a eunuch in the process. Haytham found the group and killed the priests. Haytham and Holden would then escape. The trio would take refuge in a cottage, and Jennifer revealed to Haytham that Birch was the man behind Edward's murder, and the overall Kenway family tragedy. Jennifer would mention Edward's journal, and Haytham realised that the journal he had recovered from Juan Vedemir was originally Edward's journal. Haytham further realised that Birch had sent Braddock's mercenaries, so he wouldn't see the Templar insignia on the attacker's rings. Once Holden was in a more stable condition, the three arrived at Birch's chateau, and Haytham, alongside Holden, would kill all the guards, and even Haytham's Templar associates. Before Haytham entered Birch's office, he stuck his sword through the door as he knew a guard was likely waiting behind the door. Jennifer would attack Birch, and after a violent struggle, she pushed Birch into the door, ultimately impaling Birch. Holden reappeared with Monica and Lucio, and Haytham would supply them with food, supplies, Haytham's sword, and horses. Despite this kindness, Lucio stabbed Haytham in the chest for his crimes, and this injury kept him in bed for half a year. Upon recovery, Haytham found out that Holden had committed suicide, as his injury left him severely depressed. After Holden's burial, Jennifer returned to live in Queen Anne Square, and the Kenway siblings would write to each other. However, the two didn't have much in common, and it became a rarity for the two to correspond as the only things they had to talk about were their experiences over the years. So that sums up just about everything Haytham did in between AC3 and AC Rogue. I believe all this information would work perfectly in-game, and I hope that someday Ubisoft will come to their senses and understand that Haytham's experiences would work so well as a game. Now, I'm not hating on the book, because I really do like AC Forsaken, but I really think Ubisoft should take everything from Forsaken and put everything into a game. Personally, I think the fans would love that. I mean, Haytham is literally a fan favourite, and AC fans have even made a point of saying that Assassin's Creed Rogue should have been about Haytham's story. I do agree with this, and don't get me wrong, I really enjoy Rogue and Shay's character as a whole, but Haytham and his story really just is on a whole other level. Please, Ubisoft, turn AC Forsaken into a game. As I mentioned earlier, I upload every Wednesday and Sunday at 12am Australia time. So if you enjoyed this video and others you may have watched, please consider subscribing and whatnot. It would really mean a lot. Thanks. Without further ado, please enjoy your days and nights, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Peace.